You know, um, I'm not really a jazz guy. I don't even play one on TV. But um, I do love the sound of a great semi-hollow body guitar. And when you get a good one like this one, it's um, really a pleasure to play. I don't even want to turn on the, the distortion or the overdrive because it sounds so good like this. get started I just wanted to kind of clarify something um, in this whole series of YouTube uh, videos I've been saying what makes this guitar great and affordable which are two very subjective things right I've been playing guitar since I was 17 years old I guess I find that I can connect with certain instruments and I think it's because of my years and years of playing that I kind of search for um, some response from the instrument um, tonally and physically I try to connect with the guitar and pull the most out of it that I can. So what makes a guitar great? It's to each his own, of course. But there's certain instruments that speak to me more than other ones. And there were a lot of instruments through the years that were really super high quality that have kind of gone um, forgotten. Well, what's affordable? A $500 guitar is affordable, but of course it depends on how many gigs I've had that month. When I get a good deal on a guitar, a guitar that's special, I want to let people know. You guys all know I trade stuff and put together stuff and part stuff together. And I sell stuff to get other stuff all the time. So the point I'm getting at is when I talk about affordable, I'm talking about many times less than its counterpart that might have been thousands more only because of its name. Okay, I don't know if I explained that so well, but let's move on. This guitar is a Yamaha SA2000, which I kind of thought at first it might mean semi-acoustic, but after doing some research online, I guess they called it a Super Axe, as inspired totally by the 335 line by Gibson. I've always liked the ebony fretboards, and like the old Gibson 355s, it's a beautiful look of a red cherry finish with the ebony fretboard. And gold hardware, I don't really mind on these guitars because it seems to complement the whole thing. There's a couple of kind of interesting things about it in regards to it being made in Japan. First of all, I mean, it was made at a time when, I don't know if guitars were being made so great in the United States in the late 70s, 80s. America was just going through a lot of changes with their top-of-the-line guitars. I think Yamaha did a lot of research and a lot of experimenting and put a lot of work into this guitar, although it was only around for about uh, 10 years or so. So let me just start by telling you, the tuning keys are like 14 to 1. They're super smooth and super accurate and they hold tight. Yeah, I've always liked the scroll of the Yamaha guitars. It's got the beautiful ebony fretboard. It's kind of a flat radius. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm guessing it's like a it might even be like a 17-inch um, radius. I'm not sure if it's that flat, but it's really comfortable. And I have, my action, of course, is super low, so it plays and it plays great everywhere on the fretboard with no buzzes. The neck size is more of like, I think what the, maybe between 58 and 59 Gibsons were. It's very beefy. Um, you know, the, early, the 60s uh, and 70s, some of the necks on the 335s were quite thin. So this is more substantial. It's the ebony, it's the beautiful mother of pearl. It's got the cherry finished maple top, uh, birch back, um, 
gold, just kind of, you know, a little bling bling happening here with the scrolls on the bridge and the, um, and the, uh, and the tailpiece. And even the knobs are a little bit more ornate than your regular top hat knobs. The pickups I found interesting. Now, I was trying to date this guitar. I found out they were pretty much made between, you know, 78 and 1988. And they're made mostly in Japan, I believe. Uh, this one says made in Japan on the back of the headstock, but the serial number is um, deceiving because they would start over the same serial numbers uh, 10 years later. So every 10 years it kind of flipped the serial number, so it's kind of hard to really pinpoint it. But what really gave it away was the ink uh, date code on the back of the pickups. These pickups were made specifically for these guitars. They didn't put them in anything else. So they say actually on the back of the pickups, SA, and then it says um, two numbers in the middle and two numbers at the end. The two numbers in the middle of the month, I figured out, the two numbers at the end are the date of that month. And, but the first two numbers were the ones that were a mystery to me. And I came to find out that, but these were, um, uh, the first two digits uh, on the back of the pickups indicate, uh, indicate the year in the Showa period. The Showa period is the period of Japanese history corresponding to the reign of the Showa Emperor, Hirohito. As we know, Hirohito from our history books from World War II, right? So his reign was from 1926 to 19. 85. So what they did, they would just add, they would just start counting in the year 26. So this guitar on the back of this one says 53, which would tell you that it's a 1979. It's kind of a strange way of doing things, but it's interesting. And the pickups just sound wonderful without being overwhelmed. They're, they just sound big and lush. It has like two uh, adjustable screws on the one side, so you can kind of adjust the pickup to the, um, to the angle of the strings. The setup on this guitar is just super low and super great. It's a fast guitar. I was also trying to find out who played these guitars. I remember I thought seeing a picture of Tommy Tedesco playing these guitars back in the 80s. And sure enough, I found Tommy Tedesco uh, playing these guitars in the studio. Um, and Tommy Tedesco, if you don't know, was one of the premier uh, studio players, guitar legends in California, in Los Angeles back in the... 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. When I grew up playing guitar in Alabama, he was writing an article for Guitar Player magazine, and we would always, you know, go to the back of the guitar player and read the article because he would talk about what session he'd done that week. Uh, it might have been, you know, the Deer Hunter movie or The Godfather or some movie or a TV show theme from MASH, whatever, and he'd have the music there and explain what he, what instruments he played and how much he got paid. A little, bit, little side note, I get to know Tommy Tedesco a little bit in a 1985 and 86 because he was one of the founders of uh, guys who helped start Musicians Institute. So I went to school there in 85 and 86. They were having a suggestion meeting where they're letting the students offer their insights and their ideas on how to improve the school. And some students stood up and said, uh, you should get Alan Hines to teach here. And Tommy Tedesco looked around and said, who's Alan Hines? And he, I stood up and he said, you got a job. So I started there the next day and I've been teaching there ever since, thanks to Tommy Tedesco. They're totally uh, superior instruments to anything at the time. Um, and again, I'll say this, and I don't mean anything against the company of Yamaha, but they filled up the market so much with so, so many models that were beginner models or affordable models. That's probably why this one doesn't go up a whole lot in price or hasn't, because it sure is as good as anything else that was being made in that era. But looking on eBay and Reverb, these guitars seem to go for an average like seven, nine hundred dollars to like two thousand dollars around that range. So they're super affordable. They're still out there, and get your hands on one. I actually want to buy another one at some point just because they're so nice. To let you know that it's a at the time it was probably one of the best instruments made, and it's held up. It's definitely passed the test of time. And even if you don't play jazz like me. You need to have like a semi-acoustic guitar around just to write on, um, or just to, you know, just to play. Check out the Yamaha SA Super Axe 2000. They're awesome instruments and they're affordable.
Thank you.